Hello there, this is Kush Sharma from creativepadphotography.com. Welcome to the Photoshop for Beginners video series. I welcome you and I hope that throughout these videos that you're going to be watching soon, you'll have a great time and that you will really, really learn the art of photography using Photoshop, which is so important uh, nowadays. So this is the intro video. I had actually not made this video. This is actually the last video I'm making. Uh, we had straight away started off from part one using the camera raw filter, which is the next video. Um, because what I thought initially in my process was that I would just explain you the very basics throughout the videos, uh, you know, when I'm editing those images. But then towards the end, I thought it's just better to create an intro video just to give you, uh, you know, the basic of basics, just to explain you the very basics of Photoshop. Because uh, I know some of you might not have ever accessed Photoshop before. So it's just like a warm up video to be frank. You can skip this video if you want, but I would still suggest that just go through it anyway. So we're just going to be looking at some very basics uh, inside Photoshop. So once you open Photoshop, by the way, how to access Photoshop and how to get Photoshop uh, using the Adobe Creative Cloud CC app is, uh, is something I've explained in the next video, the beginning of the next video. All right, so uh, you will be able to get your hands uh, on Photoshop. That's what I explained you in that video. But once you do have Photoshop and you open Photoshop, it's it looks something like this. So, so how it all works is, I'm just gonna be showing you here in this video some of the basic things that we'll be using again and again throughout these videos, right? So one of the things that we'll be doing, of course, is going to file, open, and then we'll be opening an image. So let's. If, we, if I open this image, it opens up, um, you know, this way, like in a tab like format, just like our browsers uh, open up. So if I open another image, for example, it's going to open in a separate tab like this. So, so I always tell people that, you know, think of Photoshop, like, like this gray area, think of it like a table or any surface on which you're keeping this printout. And then when I open another image, it's like I've kept a printout on its side. And later on, just uh, very soon, we'll be seeing how you can move around these images, keep them on top of each other, just like you would physically keep a printout of an image on top uh, of another image, right? So, so we'll just be seeing that. But before that, whenever you open an image, uh, one of the things you will see in Photoshop, and we will be spending a lot of time on this particular box here called the layers box, right? So if you're not seeing this, what can happen is sometimes if you just go here to the window menu, uh, this might be unchecked. So if I uncheck this, this is basically not there. So if you're not seeing this, uh, you can just go to window and you can click on layers. And by default, you'll get this lock thing. You'll often see me, I'll always unlock this. And uh, one thing I should tell straight away is that whenever we will be editing an image, we won't be touching the original. So every time you will see me uh, create a duplicate of this layer by right clicking and clicking on duplicate layer. So we'll have layer zero, which is our original, and we'll start our work from layer zero copy, so that uh, we don't touch the original. And we always have a reference point to see uh, what kind of changes have we made to an image with respect to our original plus, we don't disturb the original, right. So you'll often see this. And so I'll, so one of the things that we will be doing is we will be using this move tool a lot. Because a lot of times we'll have to place one image on top of another image like you'll see in the videos. So this move tool uh, is used a lot. So like, for example, if I want to keep this image on top of this image. So right now, this image has its own layer box and it's layer zero. But if I just drag this out, you know, just dragging it through my left click of the mouse button. And if I just drag this using my mouse button, I'm not leaving the mouse button. So you'll see this plus uh, cursor icon come here. It's suggesting that I'm placing, I'm adding something to this particular image. If I do this, uh, you can see that now I can close this because I've already added it here. And you know, you can see that I've kept this printout on the other printout. So it's like physically I've picked up the printout and kept or kept it on another image, right? So we're digitally uh, doing that. Then one of the things we will often be doing is changing the size of an image. For example, right now, this is too big for this image. So let's say if you want to make it small. Uh, by the way, before that, you can see here, the moment I've moved this layer, it has come as layer one on top of these layers. So now we have three layers because we put this on top and we already had two because we had duplicated here. So that's how layers work. Uh, the more layers you put on top, it'll just keep on piling up 
here right so uh, next thing i'm just going to quickly show you how to transform this image so how to change the size of this image for that you just press control or that's command on mac and you press t t for transform right and you'll see uh, these corners turn into something like this and i can just uh, drag this to make it smaller but whenever you drag this you have to press the shift key. So if I press the shift key, it just locks the width and height and it moves in proportion like this. All right, so so if I, for example, if I don't press shift, I can easily end up doing something like this. So that will lose the proportions. So whenever you do make a mistake, what you can do is just press control and Z, which is the normal undo command in most of the applications. Or it's command and Z. So this time I press control T again and I lock the proportions by pressing shift. By the way, most of these things uh, I would anyway be repeating in the videos since I told you I hadn't planned on making this intro video. So I have again explained whenever this part comes in any video. So you won't uh, forget it. So let's say I can make this really small and then press enter. And if you made this uh, layer one, a small image, right? So so that's how you, that's how layers and moving around the layers basically work. It's all uh, pretty easy. Now, one more thing I want to show you is, um, so throughout these videos, you'll be using a lot of functions from these menus. We'll be using some functions from here, some functions from here. Um, so, but one thing you should just know is a lot of times you'll be using functions which involve using a brush, right? So for example, if I use this brush tool here, uh, you'll get this circular thing here, right? So a lot of times you will almost always, we will be changing the size of this brush. So how can you do that there are two ways either i can click here and decrease the size or increase the size but that just takes too much time so i'll tell you a shortcut is um, to just use the square bracket keys which is which are close to the backspace uh, button right so square brackets the right square bracket basically increases the size and the left square bracket key decreases the size of this brush so let's say if i want to suppose uh, paint uh, this part with blue color so these two colors here, they represent the foreground color or the background color. This will go, um, you'll be able to see what we do with these later on. But right now, uh, whichever color you have on top is the color which comes on the brush. So let's say if I want to select blue color, I'll click on this foreground color, select blue, and I can draw this. Right. So yeah so just a very simple thing and you can control the opacity of this brush using this opacity slider here so if i want to if i want it to be fully opaque like this then i can do this or if i want to have uh, this brush to have a subtle effect uh, then i can decrease the opacity so throughout there are a lot of brushes here which we'll be swing, uh, which we'll be uh, using which are much more important not just painting like this they do some technical things uh, which we'll be seeing in the videos so we will be required to change the opacity often uh, to do something very subtle in a very subtle manner not you know too obvious sometimes you'll have to change the size of the brush so all this will be explained in those videos also but if you in case you're watching this you can just you know start to practice this uh, from now onwards also now another thing i want to show you is uh, how to save an image Right. So let's say this was, you know, a lot of times we'll be making a lot of changes to our images. And then finally, ultimately, though, I have not shown it in those videos. The ultimate outcome is that you have to save that image. Right. So how you save an image is you go to file, you click on save as. And you have basically two options here. One is your PSD file, which is Photoshop document, and one will be JPEG. So I'll explain you what uh, both of them basically do. So let's say if I save it as a JPEG file, okay? And let's say I give it the name uh, new, and I save it, click on okay. Now what this basically does is if I open this folder where I save this image, if I just click on new, this is gonna be basically the image that we created. So whatever changes you make, once you save it as a JPEG image, it's gonna reflect whatever you're seeing here. It's gonna turn that into an image. So if I open this image now in Photoshop, so I open new here, and if you see this thing, it just comes as a single layer, just like when we open these images on their own, you don't see all the three layers here. The work that we did you just see a single flattened layer right so 
So let's say a lot of times what can happen is you do all this and let's say you, you still have more work to do, but let's, let's say you don't have time. So you just, you just, you don't want to save it as an image, but you want the, you want Photoshop to retain this when you open it. So in that case, you won't save it as a JPEG image. What you'll do is you'll save it as a Photoshop project or Photoshop document, PSD file. So if I save this as new, but Photoshop document, I click on okay. And now if I, Let's say if I close this and if I open not the new JPEG image, but this new PSD file, then what's going to happen is it's going to open with all the three layers intact and I can resume my work. So I can move around this layer if I want to, I can do whatever I want. So I can come back to this project and keep working on it. And then when I'm finished, I can save it as a JPEG image. So PSD is basically like uh, you're saving your work, you're saving a project and your JPEG file is uh, the final outcome that you want to save because you cannot show a PSD file on, uh, you know, on uh, image viewers, you cannot share the PSD file. So ultimately you have to save the image as a JPEG image if you want to share that image or if you want to use it on different kinds of viewers because they mostly take the JPEG version. A PSD file is more like a project file. So almost every software uh, in Adobe works like this and in many other applications also. So yeah, these are just some of the basics um, that I wanted to touch upon. And um, so this is just a warm up video and I wish you good luck. And from the next video onwards, things will get technical and we'll be looking at a lot of different types of editing. We'll be looking at how to get Photoshop, the paid, the legal version of Photoshop and um, a lot of other things. So the remaining videos are all about editing nice looking images, not images like these. Okay, this was just to demonstrate. So. I'll, so the warm-up video, I hope you liked it. I'll see you in the next part where we'll start the serious editing. Bye for now.